Yellen calls on allies to confront China together. Taiwanese church shooting linked to political hate. Live stream are abused by mass shooters. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Fundy News. It's May 18th, Wednesday, and here are your top stories. U.S. Treasury Secretary Jen Yellen calling on the U.S. and its allies in Europe on May 17th to band together to challenge Beijing and diversifying supply chains. She stepped up her criticism of China's economic and trade practices in a speech to the Brussels Economic Forum. She referred to China's practices on trade and investment, development and climate policies, and lending practices that have left some countries facing unsustainable debt burdens. Yellen said, we should all aspire to encouraging China to drop objectionable practices. If we can do so, we will stand a better chance of competing with China on a level playing field, which will benefit our businesses and consumers. Yellen warned that Western countries are too dependent on China for rare earth minerals. She said these developments could make democratic, market-based economies more vulnerable to China's geopolitical leverage, but we could lessen such risk with more friend-shoring of supply chains. California authorities confirmed on May 17th the shooting at a Taiwanese church in Orange County was a politically motivated hate incident. The FBI has officially opened a federal hate crimes investigation into the shooting. The Orange County Police said the suspect was identified as David Joe Joe Wenwei of Las Vegas. He was booked on one felony count of murder and five felony counts of attempted murder. He's being held on $1 million bail. The district attorney's office is expected to officially charge him on May 16th. Media reported, the 68-year-old suspect Cho acted alone. He is a U.S. citizen from Taiwan, who lived alone and worked security in Las Vegas. Media said, Cho was motivated by anger over political tension between China and Taiwan. The person killed was identified as 52-year-old John Chen, a prominent doctor who specialized in sports medicine from Laguna Niguel. He's being credited with sacrificing himself to tackle Cho and try to disarm him, allowing others to jump in and help to avoid more serious consequences. Media reported that the self-described white supremacist gunmen who police say killed 10 people, all the victims were identified as black, at a Buffalo supermarket on May 14th, had mounted a GoPro camera to his helmet to stream his assault live on Twitch. Social media sites like Twitter, Facebook, and now the game streaming platform Twitch have learned painful lessons from dealing with the violent videos that often accompany such shootings. And that's why experts are calling for a broader discussion around live streams. Twitch is the video game streaming platform used by another shooter in 2019, who killed two people at a synagogue in Halle, Germany. When the Buffalo supermarket mass shooting opened fire and started streaming broadcasts, the company said that it quickly removed the gunman's stream. However, Experts suggest that sites such as Twitch could exercise more control over who can livestream and when. For instance, by building in delays or whitelisting valid users while banning rules violators. The New York Times reported the U.S. Food and Drug Administration authorized booster shots of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for children 5 to 11 years old on May 17th. More than 8 million of the 28 million children in that age group in the United States have received two vaccine shots and will now be eligible for the extra dose at least five months after their second shot. A U.S. CDC study stated that two Pfizer doses reduced the risk of Omicron infection by 31 percent among those 5 to 11 years old. But many parents have been reluctant to vaccinate children in this age group at all. One study done by New York researchers found that for children 5 to 11, the Pfizer vaccine's effectiveness against infection fell to 12% from 68% by four to five weeks after the second dose. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is considered highly likely to recommend the booster dose after an advisory committee of outside experts met to discuss it on May 12th. According to the study, only 29% of 5 to 11-year-olds have received two doses. Another 6% or so have received only one shot.
Japan's government has greenlit plans to allow women to take unlimited paid menstrual leave from work. In a European country first, the proposal endorsed by ministers on May 17th is part of a broader package on reproductive rights that includes allowing teenagers to seek an abortion from the age of 16 without the need to get their parent or guardian's consent. Spanish government spokeswoman Isabel Rodriguez said the proposals represented a new step forward for women, a new step forward for democracy. Under the agreed plan, women would need to obtain a doctor's note, with leave being paid by the country's social security system from their first day off work. And the government announced there will be no limits placed on the number of days a woman can take. Euronews reported, menstrual leave is currently offered only in a small number of countries including Japan, Taiwan, Indonesia, South Korea, and Zambia. According to Spanish Gynecology and Obstetric Society, around a third of women who menstruate suffer from severe pain known as dysmenorrhea. A ransomware game, the Russian-speaking county that infiltrated some Costa Rican government computer systems, has upped its threat, saying its goal is now to overthrow the government. Costa Rica's President Rodrigo Chaves declared a state of emergency over the attack as soon as he was sworn in last week. The U.S. State Department offered a $10 million reward for information leading to the identification or location of county leaders. Chev said, we're now at war and that's not an exaggeration. In a message on May 16th, County Gang warned that it was working with people inside the government and its goal is now to overthrow the government. Chavez suggested in a news conference that the attack was coming from inside as well as outside Costa Rica. Chavez also confirmed that county gang attacks affected 27 government institutions, including municipalities and state-run utilities. Conti attacked Costa Rica in April, accessing multiple critical systems in the finance ministry, including customs and tax collection. The French city of Grenoble has formally allowed women to wear burkinis, which are swimming costumes covering the whole body in public pools. Members of the Municipal Council narrowly approved the new rules during a meeting on May 16th. After a tense debate, there were 29 votes in favor of the measure, with 27 councillors voting against and two abstentions. But France's Interior Ministry has stated that it will block the move, which contradicts French laws on secularism and the neutrality of public service. From 1st June, Grenoble will allow both men and women to swim topless or wear full-body swimming costumes for sun protection or religious beliefs. The mayor of Grenoble, Eric Poyle, has argued that debate over bikini is a non-issue. He said, The change in swimming pool regulation aims to remove aberrant clothing bands and combat injunction on women's bodies. The move has been backed by women's rights activists in France, who have campaigned for people to wear what they want at swimming pools. The U.S. CDC has placed Taiwan on level 3 in the risk assessment level for COVID-19 as of May 17th. The listing means that Taiwan has had more than 100 cases per 100,000 residents in the past 28 days. The country reported a single-day record of 65,794 local transmissions on May 17th. According to the U.S. CDC, Level 3 is the high-risk level. Travelers should be up to date with COVID-19 vaccine before traveling to these destinations. If not, travelers should avoid traveling to these destinations. According to the risk assessment level for COVID-19 on the U.S. CDC, among the 110 destinations on risk Level 3, Taiwan is not the only Asian country on that list. Japan, South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam are on the list as well. But China, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, the Philippines, and Nepal are on the risk level 1, the COVID risk low destinations. However, much of the European and Oceanic countries such as Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, and Netherlands are also on level 3. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you all for joining us on Funday News. Let's make every day a fun day. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.